And we're talking today about invade with insight. You can write the invade with insight. And in this Progressive Word Foundation, please, 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 I beg you, I beseech you, I, what is the other word? Yeah, I challenge you, I charge you, work through these principles to make sure you are in it and you have it. Amen, that it's working in your, in your life. Invade with insight. We can easily say, just four points back, we said focus beyond the facts. Focus beyond the facts. Now, is that not insight? Focus beyond the facts is to see the truth. Focus beyond the facts to see the truth of who God is in the situation. Amen. But now I want to say, you can write the insight is when I take truth and I put with it wisdom. You know the truth, the truth will set you free, but now you need wisdom how to put it on the ground. You know the truth, it will set you free, but how must I apply it in the school, at the varsity, in my workplace? How must I deal with it? For that you need wisdom. Wisdom is practical application. Everybody say practical application. Solomon, with all the wisdom that he chose, was he had this way of understanding how to practically apply the principles of God. That's wisdom. So you have insight. You're a man of insight. You're a woman of insight. If you can come into this situation, you know the truth. You know what God's heart. You know his character. You know his principles. You know the foundation of how you must build. But you have the wisdom how to apply it right now. And tell them, this is what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. This Here we must be silent. Here we must take more time. Are you with me? My brother, I say you have nothing. You cannot invade. You cannot, you cannot enter the school tomorrow or the varsity, your workplace, if you don't go with insight. Because you, you go with a, I don't know, you find something like short-sightedness. But because you go with your own way of thinking. And if you go into that situation, you see it the way that you want to see it, not on purpose. Then what on earth are you going to do? Uh, what on earth are you going to do in that place? Are you with me? You have facts and you have logic. And that is how you would see things. That's how the world sees things. There's facts, there's logic. And many times your logic could be God's logic. But many, 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 many times not. Because the natural man does not receive the things of God. The word says. So how are you going to go? How are you going to do this week? How are you going to do the next year? How are you going to do the rest of this year? It better be with the insight that is from God. How do I get there? First, look at all these principles that we've laid now to get into this place. But understand, it is, it is expected from God. First, scripture, there we go. Now, the God of peace, and then he has a lot of description of who God is, will make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you what is, everybody, well-pleasing in his sight. Insight is to see that what is well-pleasing in his sight. The way that God sees varsity, God sees your job, God sees the, your school, God sees your, your dreams. The way he sees it, that's how the way you have to understand it. But first for that, you must know who God is and understand he's made you perfect in every good work. What, what does that mean? You're going to be perfect. No, there's no way. Until you die, you will not be perfect. Perfect in every good work means you have everything. You have, are perfectly equipped for every good work. God has given you everything, absolutely everything to do what he has called you to do. The problem is, are you getting into that place to allow Holy Spirit to work it in you? Perfect in every good work to do his will. Because he's working in you what is well-pleasing. Now there's one thing to do his will. And there's something else. And that is not just to do his will. But to do what is well-pleasing in his sight. That's a different level. You can do his will. In the context of I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to steal anymore. I'm, a, yeah, I'm not going to beat up that guy anymore. I'm not going to cheat on this person or on that person, I'm not going to swear the whole time. No. Okay, that is his will. It's good. 
But there's something more. There's something, the way God sees Bloemfontein, the way God sees your destiny, your friends, your marriage, your family, the way God sees things. And he wants you to see and look at things the way he sees it. Are you with me? If you're not going to do that, your opinion, your flesh, your experiences will give you a perspective of how things are supposed to be. And that's the danger. It will come automatically. It will just come. So God will help us. Next one. We see, let's rather first read. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, following the ways of his father, committing the same sin his father had caused. Guys, there's now sin that I commit. There's a way that I can walk in, and there's a doing what is evil in the sight of God. You'll find more than 20 scriptures Verses of this from different kings, even from David, from Solomon, from Saul. All these guys, you'll find a lot of scriptures about this that said it. They did evil in the eyes of God. They walked in the ways that was not from him. And they committed the sins of the forefathers. Next one. We're just going to take two or three of these. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, following the ways of Jerobeam, and committing the same sin that his father had caused Israel to commit. When you do sin, you will cause others to sin also. When you sit with a chachi attitude, when you sit with a bad attitude, you won't believe it. It's just like this. Boom. Next point. And people around you are full of poison also. And you will cause others to sin. You will bring others into temptation to walk into that fleshly perspective. You are lazy. People around you will become lazy. You are critical. People will become critical. You are justifying your compromise. People will start to justify the compromise. Either you're going to be the positive or you're going to be a negative influence. That's it. He caused them to sin. Are you, are you with me? Now, if you can get out of that, how on earth can you have insight to see what God sees in the situation if you are just stuck in the mud with all this chamors and just trying to get out of the rubbish of stop having this attitude, stop rebelling, stop thinking just about yourself, stop feeling sorry for yourself, stop with justification, get out of that chamoros, that is not the life, there is nothing of God's life in it. By his power, by his grace, through the blood of Christ, get out of it, and then follow the ways. You're going to follow the way of someone. You're going to see through the word away. There's a way. There's a strategy. See, if I'm getting out of this and I don't start to follow the way of Christ, I will get stuck here again and again and again till the way you, the, you die. You are stuck in the mud till the day you die. And then you got victory and then you fell in it. Victory and fell in it. Victory and fell in it. That's not a life. Thief came to kill, steal, destroy. Jesus came to have, give you life and life in abundance. John 10.10. 10, hey? So I must get into this place of, I'm getting in a way. Now this is, this is your type of habit. This becomes your lifestyle. This is the way that he walks. This is the way of that man. This is the way of those guys with that surname. This is the way of that culture. This is the way of that group of people. This is the way of the teenager. That's rubbish. There's a way that is right unto a man, but then there are other ways of death. Proverbs. And there's one that is called the way Jesus Christ. Is Jesus Christ is not in your strategy. It is if he is not in your way of doing things, you're deceived. You're in a place where God doesn't want you. And, and how do you believe can you have insight in your situation? If you take all these roads, but you are deceived even in what you believe, man. Uh uh. See the way of the truth. See the way of the truth. But then I must come into the place of I want to see what my father sees. You want to see what your father sees about this this week, about the Apollo. You want to see what father is saying about your destiny, 
What is Father seeing about you and his provision for you? Yeah, I need to get into that place. Because that is, that is from God. That is what he has for my life. Amen. So ask Holy Spirit to open up these three facets. Let's go on. I think there's another one. Because of the sins he had committed, doing evil in the eyes of the Lord, following the ways, committing the same sin. Following the ways. Everybody say, following the way. Committing the sin. Evil in the eyes of God. There's three different facets. Do you see? Do you see? But get into a level where you can walk with God, where life is Christ and it is eternal life to know him and walk with him. Amen. Next one. Okay, this guy the same. Next one. Proverbs 3, 5. Lean on trust and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind and do not rely on your own insight. On your own insight or understanding. Insight or understanding. How do you get there? Oh, I want to have what, how you see things. God, help me to see what you see. But then the word, God answers you and says, how will you get there? Don't lean on, don't trust, don't be confident in your own heart. But with your with your heart set on God, then yes, your confidence is on God, your trust is in Him. That's where you surrender yourself to, to Him with all your heart. So if your heart is with God, if your heart is dependent on God, if your heart is to worship Him, if your heart is to do His will, if your heart is in love with Him, if you love His presence with your heart, love His word, oh, come on, and that's a process, I know. But the more your heart is there, the more you will see the way you see things. Because you must catch his heart in his word. You must catch his heart in your circumstance. You must catch his heart in what you're going through. Our problem when we are deceived is when we want to understand the logic of his heart. When you hear his heart, many times it will not be logical will not be logical. When you see what he sees, it does not mean it's logical. It could be irrational to your own mindset. But we want to manipulate our sight in the spirit, what we see in the spirit. We want to control it with our mind that must understand what we see. Otherwise, we say it's not God. We don't have insight if we don't understand. That's rubbish. That's how the world works. You have insight when you see what he sees. Do you hear? You see what he sees. What he, what he, I don't know. I see he's, he's going there to the Red Sea. We're going to the dead end. Moses, are you totally crazy? Now we are going away from Egypt, but you lead us to the sea. We don't have boats. We're going to kind of swim over the whole sea, but we are going there. And just to emphasize the point, let's get Pharaoh with all his soldiers to come behind us. So what's the logic? Uh, uh, we have eyes, you know, we can see. If you're really stupid, Moses, you can lead us to stand here and camp here where there's the sea and there's Pharaoh and all the men. We know for 430 years what's going to happen now. If you know something for 430 years, what's going to happen? How the heck can you be so stupid to take a whole more than a million people with their kids, with their old people, just to come here to the sea and know what now? But there was something by faith that he saw in here. I will go where God leads. It's not logical. It's not logical at all. But at your dead end, that's where the miracle happens. You must first get to the dead end before the sea will open. It will not, it will not be by far, oh, I don't know how to, oh, I see, the, I, see, I see the sea is opening up, so let's go. No. Walking closer, 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 but there's no sea that opens up. Are you with me? May God help you. May God help me. I will not lean. I better trust in God to do that. Otherwise, I run into the desert. 
must, we must be confident in God. Your confidence is not because you did something right. Your confidence is not because you have this excellent skill. Your confidence is not that you have all these talents. Hello? Not because you have all these talents, that's why you're confident. Your confidence is in God. Let's say, my confidence is in Christ. Let it be so. And then, you have the capacity not to rely on your own insight or understanding. Your understanding is stupidity before the Lord. It's not like, I choose my insight. If you don't put your whole heart with God, that is what automatically you do. You choose your own insight. Okay, next one. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove, everybody say prove, what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. You need to prove. What does that mean? You need to okay with God. No, 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 no. There must be a, this a surety in your heart. I know. I know. I can give you the proof. I can give my flesh the proof. I can give my reasoning the proof. I can give my, my fears the proof. I can give my success the proof that tomorrow that is not God's guidance. It worked yesterday and you had success, you had breakthrough. But I have the proof that it is not God's will. Even though it was a success yesterday, I have the proof in me that that is not God's will. There's more, just, more than just knowing. More than just knowing God's will. Oh man, come on. Many people, they know the will of God. Many people, they know the Ten Commandments. Many people, they know, must love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your strength and your neighbor like yourself. They know the will. But there's no proof inside here. Because the word didn't become alive. The mind con is transformed. But I must get into the word in such a way that there's a surety in here. There's a proof in here that is alive. To prove what is the good, acceptable, perfect will of God. We talked about those three facets. Not true? What is the good will of God? Not going to steal. Not going to lie. Not going to swear. Not going to kill that guy. Not going to beat him up. No, oh, that's not type of person. No. Get into the good will of God. Yes. I couldn't say a sentence without a swear word in my life at one stage. So when I gave my life to Christ, as most of you guys know, then in my testimony, I will also swear. I will say, you must leave your burn alone, and otherwise you're going to burn in hell and make life, your life right with Christ. Until one week later, praise God for discipleship. <clears throat> Somebody came to me and said, do you think Jesus will testify like that? And uh, there is certain repentance came, and... Uh, at least certain words are not part of my life anymore. All I'm saying is, yes, it's good. You can do the good thing, my brother. Many Christians, they do the good will of God. They do the good will of God. They don't come late at the workplace. No, they do their work, what is expected. They are faithful. They're doing the good will of God. But there's something that is acceptable and perfect. Other translations talking about what is pleasing well-pleasing, that acceptable has to do with well-pleasing. He, his goodwill is also acceptable, but it's more in the context of well-pleasing. This is just not, not just going the extra mile, not just walking, working harder, but how will I do it with him? Remember we said, get out of the sin and then walk in some other way. I'm not just not doing the sin. I'm walking with Christ through my crisis, through my success, through my whatever. You're walking with God. That is so acceptable. That is so pleasing unto, do, unto Him. Because you're doing your life with Him. Walk with Him. Walk not on, in the sins of your forefathers. Walk not on, in the sin. And this walking like, what did we say? This is... It's becoming a habit. It's becoming your way of doing, your way of speaking, your way. You get a type of way of speaking. You're always irritated. You always have something to say. It's always half empty glass. It's not a half full glass. There's not this way of thanking God in an ordinary lifestyle. But let it become your way of working, way of walking, way of speaking of that you're just thankful. You're thankful to God. Don't become super spiritual. 
But get an attitude of being thankful. So you deal with the sin of ungratefulness and unthankfulness and this ha ha yes from negativity. Deal with that rubbish. Get out of that sin and get into the habit, into the walking, into the walking in this way where it's pleasing unto the Lord. There's a satisfaction between you and God, a well-pleasing. God says, enter the joy that my, your master enjoy. You enjoy life together. You feel together. You love together. You are guided together. You, you, uh, you experience his peace and you go in that direction. Are you with me? That's something more. Are we talking about you have sight or you have insight? Remember what we said many times? See what he is saying. Let's say that. See what he is saying. That's Habakkuk 2. Hey? Habakkuk 1, throw a tantrum, God, where are you? I scream, I scream, and you don't hear. And then chapter 2, I will stand, I will be faithful, I will stand on my watchtower, watchtower above the circumstances, and I will see what he is saying. Something totally different. Many people, many people, many people, many people heard what he what he said. Many people even got healed. And then with their healing from Jesus, they go and burn in hell. Whoa, man. Because they couldn't see what he was saying and then accept it as a revelation in their hearts. May God help you. The good, the acceptable, the perfect. Perfect will of God. Well, well, where are we there? That's where you are equipped in so everything that he has for you that you just literally live his dream. On earth, as you can write there, on earth, as it is in heaven. His perfect will, exactly how he dreamt about it. So you are living it out. That's his perfect will. What he dreamt for you. Not just, don't do this, do this. Don't do this, do this. Don't do this, do this. That's good. In all of that, I walk with you, you walk with me. Let us walk through it together. Yes, that's pleasing. But my, my dream for you. You start to live it out. It's becoming that perfect will of God. Are you still here? So pray that when you pray on earth as it is in heaven. God, help me to live your dream that you have for my life. I don't want to dream alone. I want to dream with my dad. I want to, want to dream with my best friend. My king, my master. Holy Spirit, open it up for me. I don't want to find a dream that's going to turn into a nightmare and then I say, God, where were you? Why did you allow it? <laughs> Not anymore. Next one. So he, the man of God, that is Elisha, answered the servant, do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. <sighs> are you here with me? What are we talking about? Let's look at the facts, or let's look beyond the facts. Here's the servant. He has some sight. Oh boy, we have trouble. Tomorrow you will, we have trouble. I can count. There's all the enemy, and we are a few. So what are we going to do? We're going to toy toy and say, are you totally crazy, Olius? What, what does the servant do? Come in, and he said, you're a prophet. You're supposed to have seen that we're supposed to not to be here, because look now the mess that we are in. All these, all these guys here, and we are now in this mess. What are you going to do about it? You got us in here, you must get us out here, most probably, but you will not say it like that. Did he do that? No. No, 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 no. What is the good will of God? I'm a servant. I will be faithful, even though I don't understand, even though I think we are crazy, even though I think my leader, my boss made a ridiculous decision to bring us into this place where we're now in a mess. I will, I will go and I ask him, what are you going to do? No, no, no. What are we going to do? So I'm still here with you. I'm still here with you. Faithful as if unto the Lord. Are you with me? That's how you do life. And then, after at least I declared my, that I will be faithful, serving you, and even if I must give my life and go and die in the midst of all this enemy, here I am. Then he makes this pathetic, ridiculous statement. 
Those who are with us are more than those who are against us. Oh, Lord, please open the eyes of this prophet. I think he's getting old. Prophet, just look, open your eyes, and you can see how many there are and how few we are. And unfortunately, 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 so many Christians in the past, not anymore in the future, would get stuck here forever till they die. Stuck here. Reason. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then if it doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense. And the gospel, they said this, but this. When the word says this, but I don't understand that. But it, your understanding is just that it must, must make sense according to your logic. And God will expect of you to go through that phase many times, more than once. That you will have by faith. Everybody say by faith. By faith. God is what by faith? Pleased by faith. You don't need faith to know you must stop lying, you must stop stealing, and stop killing. It's a good will of God. You just know it. But when you start, you really must go by faith, not by reasoning. It's becoming the pleasing will of God. Pleasing will of God. And then when he was willing to say, okay, Lord, I'm here. He says, we are more than them. I don't start a fight with my leader. I don't start a fight with him. And that brings him to the opportunity that that guy could pray for him and he could see, he could see, he could see all the angels, all the warriors in the spirit. Hello, are you with me? Perfect, perfect will of God. Perfect will of God is what? There's an open heaven. You can see in the heavenlies. In the perfect will of God, when you live the dream on earth, on earth as it is in heaven. That's a, that's a statement of an open heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. Because you get more and more the capacity to see in the spiritual realm of what God is. What is his dream for the city? What is his dream for the school, for the varsity, for there where you work, with your work at your workplace? What is his dream for next year for you, man? It's not just clickety-click, one prayer and everything is there. Oh, that rhyme. It's all about getting into this place. Intimacy is not cheap with God. There's no performance to get there. The performance was done on the cross. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Land. But for you to enter is not cheap. Also costs your whole life. Right. Next one. Who is there among you who is wise and intelligent? Let's say, I'm not a fool. I'm not stupid. Tell your neighbor, I'm not a fool. I'm not stupid. Okay, why do you say that? Uh, hello, why do you say that? If he's so, then let him buy noble living. Show, show, show forth his good works. With an unobstructive, I must remember that word, unobstructive humility, which is the proper Attribute for true wisdom. Oh, this is amplified. Okay, attribute of true wisdom. What are we talking about? We're talking about insight. Insight. We said insight is when there's truth and wisdom. Remember? This intelligence is not information. You have a lot of information. Google is not necessarily intelligent. It can give you a lot of information. But you need the word of God to bring you the truth that will set you free. Google cannot set you free. The word of God will set you free. Are you with me? If you know the truth and you have the wisdom, then you can. Then, then Paul addresses you and says, now, the, then you better do this. This is what you better do. Oh, sorry, not Paul James. Then James says to the church, you're going to do this, you're going to do the good works, but you will show forth a certain quality. You have a certain quality lifestyle, there's certain quality in your work. And you will, you will show it forth, and you can do it, and you're supposed to do it, and you're ordered to do it. Why? Because you're not stupid, and you're not a fool. If you are a fool and you are stupid, then, then you don't have to do it. I'm just talking now to the guys that are not fools and that are not stupid, James says. I'm talking to the guys that are intelligent, but not 
full of information, but full of the truth. The guys that know the truth, the guys that have wisdom to take time with God like wise virgins, build accurately like wise builders, those guys, come, go for a quality lifestyle. Go for a lifestyle where you do the perfect will of God because you guys have insight. The rest, it's not possible for them to have a quality lifestyle because they have no insight, because there's no wisdom, there's no truth in them. When the truth is not in you, that is what the, the word calls stupidity. Not, not if you don't know how to do a lot of maths and science. No. God made you different. And don't be lazy. Use that as an example. But what am I saying? Intelligence, let's say, I'm intelligent through the truth. I have wisdom as I pray for it. James 1 says, if anybody is lacking wisdom, let him pray. And God will without, without, uh, what is it? Without what? Give unto you. Thank you very much. Are you with me? And then the good works that you do will show forth that what is from God. In this humility, attribute with true wisdom. Humility with true wisdom. In some of the translations, a lot of them are talking about the meekness. Talk about teachability. Talk about that you are teachable. It's the meek that will inherit the earth. That means it's the softest that will inherit the earth. No, it's the one that is always teachable. When must you, when is the danger, the danger, danger there not to be teachable? When you are in offense, when you have a hardened heart, but most of all, when it's successful, when you have success, you have all these blessings, you have all this uh, provision, you have all these wonderful things around you. That's the moment every, every, every time Israel fell in the rubbish. Paul says, it's written down for you to learn from it. What does that mean? You don't inherit earth because you were successful and you have a lot of blessings and you, you were successful in your business. No. Inheriting earth is because you stay humble. When must you be teachable? When you are very successful, then you must be more teachable than the day when you were facing a crisis or a challenge. Because every time they, they left that humility, dependency, teachable attitude, with God, they left it and their heart was locked into the Canaan, into the promises, into the blessings God gave them. So may, may God help you because they lost their sight, they lost their insight. They lost the insight. It's one thing looking at the sight of a giant, but the insight is I see a God that is hundred millions times bigger than you, me, David saying, Goliath, wait. The freak, do you get the gods to come against us? We come to you in the name of the Lord. It doesn't mean anything to Goliath because he has no insight of what is this teenager maniki talking about. But the man with the insight had such an insight, he was even surprised at the guts that Goliath had. <laughs> Are you here? Uh -huh. God's going to help us. Next one. We're going for a landing. Is there nothing more? There must be more. You say there's nothing more in the Word of God. <laughs> oh, there is. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, guys. Okay, I'm going to leave that too. It was not up there, it seems to me. Uh, let's end off rather. In this insight, my brother, my sister, please don't get frustrated when you get into the word and you see what you must, you mustn't, you must, you mustn't. Remember last week when you talked about the, the Ten Commandments? You can hear, I must not do this, I must not do this, I must not do this, I must not, I must not steal, I mustn't kill, I mustn't commit adultery, I cannot speak evil. Or you hear the heart, how God says, I want a family where they don't destroy one another. They don't steal from one another. They are thankful. 
They appreciate one another. They rejoice in one another's victories. They're excited with, when I bless that lady, the, that lady is excited. That sister, that brother is excited when I bless my other child. That is, God's speaking about, I want this awesome quality family with a lot of character, gold, and integrity in their hearts, in how they relate to one another. And in that family, I call that family more than heaven. That is the place I dreamt of that is beyond, beyond heaven and when you get that eternal perspective of God's insight insight that means it's not just prophetically what he sees how he's gonna get involved tomorrow tomorrow he's getting involved with that agenda tomorrow he's he's getting involved in your day in Bluefontaine in the school in wherever you are he's gonna get involved with that but are you gonna be there with him are you going to be there with him? If you have this insight, we will talk next time about Jay, join with Jesus. Sounds very cliche in that sense. But that joining, you can even go and look at it already, how we are joined together with him. It's not just a cheap word. It's an amazing, amazing, amazing privilege. But let's pray that God will change our hearts Open the eyes of our hearts, Lord, that we may see you. If the eyes of your heart are not opened, you cannot see God. You will see the son of Joseph, not the son of God. Nazareth, where God could not do the works. And God wants to do a lot of work in your life. He cannot do a work in your life if you only acknowledge the son of Joseph. What does that mean? I, you've heard about Jesus. You know the word. You've heard the scripture. You heard this teaching. You heard this. You, you, you know how to ignore when you hear the word. You know how to let your thoughts wander when you pray. You know how to not get excited about the word of God if he doesn't really, really perform towards you and speak suddenly to you. Then you can't get into that lifestyle. But no, I, I'm going to change, you're going to change. Amen? Tell your neighbor, I'm going to change. In Jesus' name. Okay, so let it be so. God, come and do a great work in our midst. Lord, I pray that you will help us touch every eye. Forgive us for going by sight. But through faith in your word, you want to give us insight, Lord. We don't want to. Walk into tomorrow. Invade a meeting without your sight. Father, we want to dream with you about tomorrow. We want to see what you see for our city, for our nation, for our lives, for our families, our marriages. Guide us in this, Lord. I pray that you will do this precious work so that we have this honor to see with our Father, not just following you, but walking with you and seeing the same from a heart that is united. I pray that as a quality for every man, woman in this place, and that we will allow you and your presence to do that. Thank you for that in Jesus' name. Let's all say, Amen. Amen. Amen.